All right, everybody, photosynthesis and transpiration, two great things. Now, I found this picture. This doesn't have a whole lot to do with photosynthesis and transpiration, but I found this picture of like this cat island that exists like somewhere in the Pacific where like you basically, you take your boat. Oh, by the way, I love cats. You take your boat, you get to this island, and this is, is what greets you, which is horrifying because they're probably like feral angry cats. But if you're like me and you just love cats, all I want to do is like run into run into this cat and then snuggle them all. This one looks like he is going to murder you. So anywho, like I was saying, let's talk about um, photosynthesis. And so my hope is that this is a review. My hope is that this is We've, you've kind of had some knowledge of, or you've had some work with photosynthesis before, either in biology or in grade school. So I'm going to make this very reviewsies, okay? So the goal of photosynthesis is, is, is to make the glucose, right? The glucose is that basic molecule. It's that biomolecule we've been talking about. It gives us short-term energy. Human beings cannot make glucose, but we need it. Plants can. So because of photosynthesis, we are able to... Um, eat the plants, consume the glucose, and then use it as fuel, okay? But photosynthesis is, is, and the plants are what really is this foundation, okay? They make the magic, the magic molecule. So what is it, right? We know this. It's carbon dioxide, and it's water, and it's sunlight, okay? And what do you get? You get glucose and oxygen. Not only do we need glucose, obviously we also need oxygen to breathe, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, the photosynthesis is kind of a bit, a bit on the complicated side, and I'm going to try to make this simpler. We are going to talk about this in further detail, but just for now, let's talk about what, what's going on here. So photosynthesis happens in the chloroplasts, okay? They are what make plants green. We'll talk about why they're green really quickly later on. So the main things here is you've got your thylakoids and your stroma, Okay. Your thylakoids are, these are the green things right here, the little green pancake things. And your stroma is the fluid in between, okay? That's where basically everything happens. So if we were to look at um, like a plant cell or a plant leaf under a microscope, you might be able to see chloroplasts because they're pretty, they're relatively large considering organelles, some organelles. Um, but that's basically where it's happening. It's happening in the chloroplasts, which are in the leaves, and in those chloroplasts are the thylakoids and the stroma. There is a membrane, and that's important too, but it's just kind of more of explaining the structure of the chloroplasts than like what we really need to know about. Mm -hmm. All right, why, why chlorophyll, why chloroplasts, why who cares? Basically, the membrane. So the thylakoid membrane contains all of these, right? It contains all of these um, pigments, and they grab light. They grab the light, they grab the light, they grab the light. The chlorophyll, right? Okay, they're grabbing the lights, they're grabbing the lights. The reason why it's green is that what bounces back, okay? So the chlorophyll grabs every other type of light except for green, okay? The, cartino the cartinoids take everything but the orange. Xanthophylls take everything but the yellow. Okay, am I going to test you on this? No, but I want you to know there's all these pigments in there that basically their job is to collect the wavelengths of light. So light comes traveling at these, at the chlorophyll and like these little like photon beams, okay? And the chlorophyll is waiting there to eat it up, like it's a, like a Pac-Man, okay? That's what the chlorophyll's job is. The chlorophyll is in the thylakoid, which is in the chloroplast. Hopefully you guys haven't lost you yet. Okay, so here's all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, chloroplasts are green because chlorophyll absorbs red and blue and it reflects green. That's all. That's really all we need to know. The one other thing that I want you to know about this is this, these wavelengths are energy. This light is the energy. And the wavelengths contain energy. Different lights have different wavelengths. Okay, so the red and the blue are going to be the most conducive to making chemical energy, which is glucose. So all of these fun graphs, all of this fun stuff just tells you that the thylakoids are grabbing the light and the light is energy. Ba-bam! 
Okay. So here you go. So like I said, if you were to, if we were to look at this in a look at a cell inside a um, or look at a leaf inside a microscope, you'd probably see the chloroplasts. They're because they're the most green part. Here's another fun fact. When we talk about the chloroplasts, they're going to be primarily in the leaves. So plant leaves are a certain way, right? Plant leaves are flat. They're positioned a certain way because their job is to collect the light. They're basically platters of chloroplasts whose job is to collect this light, collect this light energy, okay? So when we talk about mitochondria, they're very similar to mitochondria. We have not mentioned mitochondria, so if you sort of like, huh? Um, we'll get to that. But they are very similar to mitochondria. So, and that's why the matrix, and we'll talk about the matrix too, is very similar to the matrix in the mitochondria, okay? Now, right, here we go. So you've got the solar energy that comes in. You've got this water that comes in, okay? And what you're having is the water and the solar energy along with the carbon dioxide that comes in is producing essentially oxygen and what will eventually be put out here is glucose. I'm totally simplifying this. I hope that makes sense. That's how this works. The different reactions here, you've got your light reactions and your dark reactions. Okay, the Calvin cycle is also called the dark reactions. We're going to talk more about this later too. Okay, so that's what goes on. Um, so basically, think of the photosynthesis in two parts. The first part is using water, light, okay? The second part is using carbon dioxide. And it's producing oxygen and glucose. Here we go again. There we go. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about this stuff, we're going to talk about ATP, and ATP is just another form of energy that we can use. Don't get too hung up on ATP. We'll talk about it when we talk about cellular respiration. But just know that what its job is to also make ATP. And ATP is a form of energy that, that we can use. The light reactions, just think of it this way. You've got, again, the light reaction makes oxygen. The Kelvin cycle or the dark reaction makes the sugar. That's all I need you to know right now. We will talk about the NADPH and the ATP and all this chemistry stuff, but we're not going to do it now. If you guys want to nerd out and be like, oh, according to my calculations, it's actually NAD+, I, we'll get there, guys, okay? Um, as just for like right now, the way that we're talking about it, we're talking about it in very general terms, and we're also talking about transpiration. I want to keep this as simple as possible for us. So there we go. Yay, everything's there. You've seen this slide. Hopefully by now you're like, it's making sense. So let's talk about transpiration. So transpiration happens, it's this amazing thing that, that plants can do. They absorb the water. So we know that plants need carbon dioxide and water and light. We know that. Well, how do they get all this together? They do that by transpiration. So you've got the water that's absorbed for the, for, through the roots. Now remember how sticky water is with the water can stick to each other, can stick to the, the, the side of the the plant or the side of the plant vessels, that's how it works. It kind of sucks the water up and it brings the water to the leaves. What? And then you also have the carbon dioxide in the air and then you've got the light from the sun. That's how everything is gathered together. The leaves also have these little pores that will give out oxygen. It'll also evaporate some, some extra water. So the water doesn't use gets evaporated and it's also creating glucose, um, uh, let's put sugar. It's also making sugar in the form of glucose that when we eat, we get that sugar. What is real? So 90% of the water that enters the plant is using for other things, for cell, cell division, cell function, all that stuff. Some of it evaporates. Only 10% of that water is used for photosynthesis, but it's still important that we get water there. So big deal, what's the point of transpiration? So transpiration can do a couple things. Remember, transpiration is just the gathering of materials into the plant to conduct photosynthesis. It moves minerals and sugars throughout the plant, okay? It also cools off the environment because, remember, photosynthesis, it's, it's giving off oxygen, and it also... Part of the, the, the water doesn't use, it's evaporating hydro, 
um, I'm sorry, it's evaporating water into the air, which cools off the air. It also keeps plants upright. If there's water going through the plant's veins, it's going to keep that plant upright so it can, can absorb sunlight and to conduct photosynthesis. This is basically accomplished by what's called turgor pressure. So the, there's the cell, the basically cell uh, plant cells are kind of, they're kind of, they're more like um, honeycomb-ish. And the water pushes against the cell and that's what keeps the plant upright. Again, I can talk more about this too. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So that's what I got, guys. Please write down your questions. And like I said, if you guys are like really want to nerd out and you've got questions, I kind of skimmed over some things because that's where I don't need you to know all that stuff right now. If you want to, meet, if you want to know that stuff, um, then I, we will talk about it in class later. Deuces.